Hello, this is Ed Weir, former manager of the Social Security Administration. Today, I'd like to talk to you about something that uh, I think pretty much all YouTubers and bloggers and everybody out there that uh, chimes in on Social Security gets wrong. I um, haven't seen many people discuss it correctly. And today I'm going to use an actual reference from the Social Security Administration. So, you know, it comes directly from official policy, and that is do delayed retirement credits, that's when you delay your retirement, extra money, um, does that money go to surviving spouses? I, a lot of people get that wrong um, on YouTube. And so we're going to talk about that today. And remember, please uh, share and subscribe and all that kind of good stuff. If you know anybody um, that's receiving those benefits and you think they might be wrong, make sure you share this video with them. All right, let's get into it and let's see how we can help you out. Okay, so let's look at the actual policy. This is called POMS, what the Social Security employees use, the Program Operations Manual System. So when you're first hired by Social Security, um, there's about a three month training, eight hours a day, five days a week for about three months. And then uh, after that, you're uh, kind of in review for many months after that. Um, so it takes a good for a claim specialist, what uh, Social Security used to call claims representative, and they changed the name to claim specialist. Um, but uh, to be completely independent, uh, it takes a good year or two. Um, POMS, the, the, this manual, is over 20,000 pages. So that's why anytime you see anything on YouTube or you know, these quick little blogs about this, that, or the other on Social Security. Um, it usually covers part of it, but uh, I haven't found a, other than ssa.gov, um, I haven't found a, a YouTube channel or, or blogger out there that really covers it correctly 100% of the time. Um, so that's what we're going to do today, because this is one of the things, one of the issues I see covered incorrectly all the time it seems like uh, it, nobody seems to get it right so once and for all i want to go through the actual policy that social security employees refer to when they make the decision on how much you're going to receive as a widow or widower okay or also called a survivor benefit all right so it has it right there it says uh, the amount of widow widower's benefit so the types of computation used is determined by the age of the widow, widower, whether the deceased number holder, number holder, NH, number holder. So that's the actual person. So you've got the number holder, the actual person uh, that is deceased, or the spouse you're going to be collecting benefits off of, or the parent that you're going to be collecting benefits, the one that actually holds the Social Security number from where you derive your benefits. So Social Security employees use that all day long the number holder, the number holder, the number holder. So they um, ever received reduced benefits or died prior to attaining age 62. If the number holder was entitled to reduce benefits, there is a limit to the amount payable to the widow, regardless of whether the widow entitlement began prior to or after full retirement age for review of the computation. So these are the reviews of the computation for the FRA. So this is what we're gonna talk about today, whether a survivor receives what the PIA, that is the primary insurance amount when that person was their full retirement age, will they receive a reduced amount? So if the number holder, the deceased, um, started collecting at 63, will the survivor get that? Well, today we're going to talk about delayed retirement credits. That's the one pretty much everybody out there gets wrong. So let's talk about that and let's click on this little button here and then it'll take us to the actual um, policy on the computation. All right, here it is. So this is another thing that Social Security employees use. They use uh, RS006 uh, and, and all those numbers. We used to have a technical expert in our office that could recite a lot of these uh, from, from heart. It was, uh, it was pretty scary. But anyway, so the delayed retirement credits, when a person dies, does the spouse, the surviving spouse receive delayed retirement credits? So if let's say the P 
PIA, the primary insurance amount, how much that the uh, the deceased would receive at full retirement age. So let's say it's two thousand dollars, but they waited until they were seventy years old. So the two thousand dollars plus delayed retirement credits. We're talking about eight percent every year. They wait after their full retirement age, and let's say just to make it easy, uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Okay, and that's probably not it, but anyway. Let's say $2,500. So the deceased was receiving $2,500, $2,000 plus, you know, delayed retirement credits. Does the surviving spouse get that? Yes, they do. Here it is right here. The 1977 amendments provide an alternate method of computing the widow's original benefit to include the deceased number holders, DRCs. So all the YouTubers out there that get this wrong, pretty much everybody, um, so eligibility, the DRCs will be added to the widow's, widower's benefit if number holder was entitled to retirement insurance benefit, so the RIB, and the monthly benefit amount, MBA, was increased by DRCs. Basically in English, which again, a lot of this isn't in English. That's why I'm doing these videos to make it easy. So if you want to go to ssa.gov and read this, go to Palms, go to this RS and go through the 20,000 pages, or you can just watch my video, subscribe. I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these videos. So here it is right there in the policy manual in black and white, well, semi black and white in English, but so the number holder was entitled to insurance retirement benefits, which let's, of course, that's what we're talking about. And the monthly benefit amount was increased by delayed retirement credits, yes, the deceased was receiving extra benefits because they waited past their full retirement age and were receiving delayed retirement credits, benefits, and therefore will be added. The DRCs will be added to the widow's benefits, right? Um, number, ho number holder would have been entitled to RIB and monthly benefit amount would have been increased by DRCs. So if the person had um, was not receiving their benefits and they dis and they deceased, they passed away um, after their full retirement age and they just, you know, we're just waiting, waiting, waiting. Then that also will increase the delayed retirement credits and therefore the surviving spouse can also receive delayed retirement credits, okay? The DRCs. And this is a railroad board. The road, don't worry about this little note on the railroad board. Um, the railroad board is is interesting. They've you know, it's yeah. That's a whole another that's a whole another issue. Even Social Security employees don't know how. A lot of times, uh, uh, the railroad benefits they kind of supersede, dovetail with sometimes with Social Security benefits and, and who has jurisdiction on a particular case. Um, we usually just call the railroad board and say, okay, is this your case or our case? And so. Anyway, there's that. All right, so that is uh, essentially um, the definitive word on whether a surviving spouse receives delayed retirement credits. That is, how much do they receive? The, the deceased passes away receiving $2,500 because they had delayed retirement credits in there. Then the wife was essentially, if again, if she's past her full retirement age, then she will receive essentially what? that person was receiving or husband or whatever the case may be. Um, so the full benefit amount, including the delayed retirement credits. And as I mentioned in some of my other videos, if the surviving spouse is already on the deceased's record, you really don't have to do anything. Everything will be automatic. It's automatically converted, auto convert. Um, when the, um, the coroner or the funeral home or the state, uh, whatever the case may be, um, puts it into their system electronically that connects to the social security system and the social security system, obviously, because they want to stop the check as soon as possible. You have to be the alive the entire month to be entitled to that check. And again, checks always come um, the month after. So January check comes in February, February check comes in in March. And the reason is because and invariably we all pass away. So Social Security wants to make sure they're able to stop that check. So the Treasury, if, if it goes into the account, then Treasury, just go ahead and leave it in there. Treasury will just go in there and grab it and pull it out if the person did not um, live the entire month, the entire previous month. Okay. 
And if you are a surviving spouse and you are receiving even $1 from the deceased's record, then you are on that person's record and you don't have to do anything. Um, you don't need to go get a, you know, a, a death certificate or anything like that. Those are expensive. Save your money. Uh, again, it's all automatic. Um, you don't have to do anything. You just wait for your benefit to increase and get that embarrassingly low $255 lump sum death payment. Okay? But if you're not on that person's record, then yes, you will have to call Social Security and file a surviving spouse claim. Um, and you can just do that uh, over the phone pretty, pretty easy. And again, you don't probably won't need any proofs or anything like that, If uh, um, especially if when the person filed or you filed, you had mentioned that you were married to that particular person. So it's uh, it's pretty easy to get it done. All right. So uh, again, uh, uh, please subscribe, like, share. And if you need any help with uh, all things uh, Medicare, um, uh, you know, a, B, C, D, the Medicare supplements. Uh, we're doing a whole bunch of things. Uh, people uh, don't prepare for the inevitable. So we're in this channel. We're not only going to educate you, but we're, we're also going to try to, you know, prepare you for perhaps the inevitable. Um, life's, as they say, is what happens uh, when you're making other plans. Right? All right. If you got any other questions, make sure uh, you schedule an appointment. Um, and give us a call if you need any help and you have a beautiful day.